Welcome to the Gig Show. I'm your host, Jim Dorman. Uh, Dan Cody couldn't be with us today. Uh, uh, he's working on some new music, and we hope you'll check out his, uh, his new tunes at uh, dancodymusic.com. Uh, usually we're talking to entertainers like Dan, uh, musicians and uh, performers, but sometimes we also like to talk to people who are uh, doing things and uh, things that you might be able to do. So uh, today we're going to be talking to uh, Kim Mio about the, uh, the harvest of the cranberry this year. And uh, the uh, Cranberry Bog Harvest Tour uh, is going to be happening this fall, and you, you can attend that. Kim is the event manager uh, of the, the Harvest Tour, so she's going to be here to tell us about uh, cranberries and the wonderful bog tour that you can take this fall, just to see how cranberries are, are harvested. Uh, some of you might recognize her as the uh, former longtime news director at Plymouth Area Community Television. So please, uh, please welcome Kim Mayo to the Gig Show. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. Kim, uh, why do you think the, uh, the Cranberry Harvest to uh, Tour is, or just the cranberry harvest in general is so fascinating mm -hmm. to people? Uh, you know, the floating berries in the blue water, the blue sky, and the foliage behind you, it's something to see, I have to say. Um, yep. People are really interested in it. We have so many phone calls, emails. Um, we go to conferences and uh, things, travel travel tours and things like that, and inter international people, they, they don't have cranberries, so right. they're really fascinated with the floating berries and um, and then ag tourism is a really growing industry mm -hmm. as well. So people want to learn where their food comes from, uh, how farming practices work, and so yeah. we try to t tie all that into our tours. Right. Uh, yeah, it certainly is something colorful, and you can see. I know now today with the uh, with the photography we can have, we're seeing the <laughs> the overhead shots of the of the bogs and and the, uh, and the workers in there. Certainly. Uh, something that's really fascinating, but there, it's, it's not the only way that cranberries are harvested, is it? There's two two ways cranberries are harvested. There's dry and there's wet. Right. Ninety five, ninety six percent of wow. the industry is now wet harvested. Okay. So the difference is when you dry harvest, they have machines that um, everything has to be completely dry, and right. that becomes your fresh berries that you might find, you know, in a in a box or a bag at the store mm -hmm. during just during the season. Uh, and you can freeze them, so that's a good thing. <laughs> um, and then you can right. cook with them all year. The wet berries mm -hmm. again, which is 96% of the industry is now harvested this way, right. uh, is when they flood the bogs, they knock the berries off the vines, and then they corral them and load them to the trucks and take them to the receiving plants. Right. And that becomes your juice, your sweet dried cranberries, and your cranberry sauce. Wow. Um, some people probably have a misconception about, <laughs> about the berries and the water, and uh, can you Yes. It was that process. Well, people <laughs> often think cranberries are grown in water. Yeah. They, they are not grown in water. Um, they actually, sand is a really important element to mm. growing cranberries. If you don't have sand, you don't have cranberries. It acts as a natural fertilizer. It helps with pests. Um, and every three to five years, every bog gets a layer of sand applied to it. Mm -hmm. um, and usually in the winter time. And when you renovate a bog, you use sand. So they actually like that sandy soil. That's why they grow so prominently in the southeastern mass, is we have really sandy soil there. Uh, sand, peat, gravel, they, they like that. And uh, so people think they grow there, but actually too much water, they'll, they'll start rot at, mm -hmm. the, at the vine level, at, you know, at the root level. Um, too little water, they're, they're too dry, and you don't get a good harvest. So it's a very uh, watched yeah. Uh, watering system, but they use water when they flood the bogs, like I said, in wet harvest, which is coming up at the end of September. Mm -hmm. So usually late September to early November is harvest season. And we'll have thousands of people come out you wow. know, to either either through um, the tours or through we have a lot of government things like uh, meetings or the farmers or their, you know, whoever comes out, um, you know, people just really want to come see it. Wow, I, I, you know, you mentioned a lot of factors. There is is uh, it's got something kind of risky business. <laughs> Being a farmer is risky business, yeah. and any any agriculture, um, it's finicky. It's dependent on weather. Um, you know, we keep eye on these hurricanes that are that are you know starting right now. It can devastate uh, your crop. Um, drought last summer we had drought that was. Uh, you know, it was kind of looking rough in August, and it, then it all of a sudden started to pick up rain a little bit in September. All of those things affect your crop, how big your berry gets, the redness coming out. Uh -huh. When you bring your crop to the receiving plant as your crop, this is a farmer's crop. This is their livelihood. Right. Um, they allow us to bring tours, which is wonderful, but it, it is their 
livelihood. So um, if, the, if it's not red enough, um, if there's too much rot, uh, too many sticks or stuff in the load, they'll get a less price for that load. Mm -hmm. So um, they really keep an eye on that water level. If it's too, you know, if it's a drought season, you have to water it more often. Mm -hmm. And they all have a water source near them that they can use for, for um, irrigation. And if it's too wet, you have to, you know, mm -hmm. just work with that too. So it's a, they're constantly out there working. And yeah. then we have frost is another problem. Well, it's a com it's a known element mm -hmm. in, in cranberries. Um, it's in the spring and early summer and it's in the fall. So if a, a cranberry grower can lose their entire crop in 30 minutes, if they don't protect their vines, and the berries from a frost. So, you know, it's right, even now it's, um, you know, warm during the day, but at night it can drop quite a bit more than you realize. Mm -hmm. And at the top of the cranberries, it's maybe the, um, at the top of the, of the bog, it's maybe the temperature that you would hear in the news. At vine level, it's 20 degrees less. Oh, so okay. they, have what's, they have a frost committee that watches that and does a whole calculation and communicates to the growers if they believe it's gonna be a frost night and different varieties, there's over a hundred varieties of cranberries. Mm -hmm. Some can have different tolerance to frost. So each variety will say, this one can take a little more cold, this one can't. And they all often have several varieties on their farms for different products. Um, so they will have to uh, use the water, again, use the water to flood that bog freeze. It freezes and in that freezing process, heat gets trapped. And it's like called like heat transfer. The, a little bit of, of heat will get trapped right on that bud and protect it. Mm -hmm. So if, the, if it gets really cold frost overnight, the, it will be protected so they don't lose their crop. Wow. Um, and it seems like there's a pretty strong community of, of farmers and, uh, and your organization yes. as well. So if, th if things are happening, if people kind of pull together? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I work for the Cape Cod Cranberry Growers Association. Right. That was established in 1888. Mm. So it's it's a <laughs> uh, it's a very old organization, mm. um, and we have about uh, around 300 growers in it now. Not every grower. It's a it's a membership mm -hmm. organization. Okay. Um, and we work to we our I don't do this part. I do the tourism part. Mm -hmm. But we like help them with regulations, whether it's local, state, federal regulations, grant programs. Um, different pesticide use regulations they have to go by and be certified and we sort of help them through all of that because they're farmers and they're they're out there farming and that's you know every day they're out there and so the organization absolutely pulls together to communicate that information um, there's uh, bog restoration programs too if you if you want to restore a bog or even renovate a bog um, there's grant programs and we help them through that process um. Well, that sounds like it's a big help. And you said 1888, was that? Is when Cape yeah. Cod Cranberry right. Growers, Association, <laughs> Growers Association. And also known as? Also known as Massachusetts Cranberries, <laughs> and as my shirt yes. is. Uh, okay. And the, the reason is a couple things. Cape Cod Cranberry Growers mm. Association, it, it's a lot to say. Right. Um, and we're actually not on the Cape. Uh, there are cranberry growers and cranberry farms on the Cape. Um, there's only a few that it's kind of, we've seen a lot of different cranberry farms um, either have to sell off to bigger bigger cranberry growers or they have to close their farms for revving workforce development issues, um, next generation not wanting to take over. So we talk a lot about <clears throat> those programs in vocational schools and ag schools about the cranberry industry and the jobs that are yeah. there. Um, so we also, we're not really on the, always exactly on the Cape, we're mostly in southeastern Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. So our offices are in Plymouth, but our tours, our public tours start and end in Carver. We have our group tours that we do start and end in Wareham. So it's Wareham, Rochester, um, Middleborough, you know, all, all those surrounding yeah. towns. Okay, well, I definitely want to talk a little bit you know, more about the tour, but for, mm. first maybe, uh, <laughs> Massachusetts has kind of a long history with the cranberry, certainly a strong identification. Yes with it, uh, can you tell us? It goes a lot back even further, right? It goes even further back than <laughs> 1888. Um, so gl when glaciers were here, they, when, when they receded, they actually left kettle ponds, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me. And um, because of the sandy soil here in mm -hmm. Southeastern Mass, cranberries just flourished. They have always been here yeah. and they would just move in. And then um, the indigenous people used them for dyes, medicine um, and um, and then their food, so they would make certain food with it, like put it with the, with the meat and it would freeze and yeah. it would, because it, it's so healthy, it's a, it's mm -hmm. a superfood. Uh, it's actually in, 
antioxidants, high in vitamin C, it's, a, it's an anti-inflammatory, it's a very, very healthy uh, fruit. And then um, when early settlers came, mm -hmm. They also used, uh, they actually used to call it a crane berry. So that's yeah. where it first got its name. They thought the flowering plant in the summertime, when, the, when it flowers, it's a beautiful flower, very unique looking, and it does resemble the head of a sandhill crane. So they used to call it crane berries. And somewhere along the line, the E got dropped. Nobody knows exactly when, and it's called the cranberry. Uh, so they also used it um, and exported it and um, so that's kind of how the history of it, but it's always been here, and we represent about 23% of the United States cranberries now. Mm -hmm. So we used to be number one. Um, Wisconsin has, has jumped into number one, and actually Quebec, Canada is number two, and we are number three. So those regions mm -hmm. just have more land and yeah. more agricultural land mm -hmm. that <clears throat> has been, so our marsh is because of those kettle ponds, mm -hmm. They're kind of funny shaped. Uh, they're the, still the natural, a lot of our bogs are still the, the natural shape from those kettle ponds. Um, so it's really beautiful. And our, our, mar, our cranberry bogs are the, in the fabric of the community. Mm -hmm. There's like, you know, down paths and in homes and, in, and, it's, and they're just some really beautiful farms. Um, they're in Wisconsin, a lot of it is agricultural land. And so it's, you know, very rectangular shaped and yeah. that sort of thing. Um, and they have colder temperatures. Mm -hmm. so. Climate change has been affecting the cranberry industry here yeah. more so than than there. It's colder there. They do the cranberries actually like the cold, mm -hmm. uh, not fr frozen though. <laughs> it's a very sensitive yes, thing. Right. Um, so they and um, their workforce costs and taxes are a lot lower than ours. So all those things, and they have a lot of hybrid varieties which can produce a lot more cranberries. So yeah. we got butted down to third place. Yeah, but I like what you say about the, uh, the, the natural appeal, I think, of, of the cranberry bogs here in Massachusetts. Yes. Uh, I was able to see some of the farming in uh, Wisconsin on some videos. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 and it's a little yeah. more industrial right. looking. Right. Uh, and the, even the whole process seems, you know, as opposed to the farmers in the in the water, you know, uh, moving the cranberry stores. Well, they do that. It's it's yeah. similar uh, farming practices. Okay. They might have, I, I don't know, all their their advancements in technology. Yeah. But what's interesting about cranberry farmers <clears throat> is there's no company that makes cranberry farming equipment. Mm -hmm. They've all had to make their own equipment. Okay. They they actually design it, they engineer it, they build it. So there's all these engineering jobs, mechanical jobs, it's just on top of the farming job. Yeah. Um, it's like I go into their barns and it's like the old Willy Wonka, you know, factory there. Yeah. It's the craziest looking things, but they've had to think, how can I knock berries off in an effective manner without damaging the vine? Because come harvest time, the mm. bud for next year's berry is already on that vine. Mm. Yeah. And these vines are hundreds of years old. It's the same vine. It's a perennial, so it just keeps growing. If you take care of it, they grow up like this, like an upright. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then um, when they get too tall, you put the sand on it like that, and it pushes it down, and new uprights will come. So it's the same vine that dates back over 100 years wow, on some that, of our bogs. Yeah, that, and that's that's kind of a cool aspect of it, isn't it? <laughs> um, and, and, and again, I think you said some of the, grow the growers are going back a few generations Absolutely, themselves. yeah, we have you know. many generational family growers. Mm -hmm. uh, it's wonderful to see that sometimes you go out to harvest and they'll have the little ones yep. in the little kid waders out <laughs> helping them, um, teaching them, you know, how, how to be a cranberry farmer. It's, it's hard work. Uh, I am not a cranberry farmer. <laughs> it's very hard work. Uh, yeah. They work, like the frost nights, they're sleeping in their trucks out on their bogs, keeping an eye on all of their different yeah. varieties. Uh, they don't sleep. You see them during uh, frost season. Uh, they come into the office to do something, and they just look so tired. You know? right. <laughs> they haven't slept, so I, um, yeah. they they work very very hard. They seem like they really care about you know what they they're do. doing. They do. So, and that's probably part of the way it passes on. Um, well, uh, I know they're very busy, like you said, but do you? Do you see them on the tours? Um, Absolutely. Um, uh, a lot of our tours, um, the growers will, if they're there, or the work, sometimes the workers um, will come out and talk to the crowds. If uh, And the crowds love that. They love hearing yeah. from the cranberry growers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, sometimes they don't. Depends. Every tour is different mm -hmm. because <clears throat> harvest, you harvest a tour once a year. I mean, a bog once a year. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Um, when that one's done, I won't be there till next year. Mm -hmm. So it's constantly moving around. Every experience is different. There may be a grower there, there may not. A lot of my tour guides that I have are cranberry growers. And they just, 
love to just support the industry, so they wanted to be a tour guide. So I have a lot of cranberry growers. Um, oh, that's neat. And some of them have incredible science backgrounds, so mm -hmm. if often I'll get um, a college or university who wants to come for a tour, and, and I'm like, you know, it's they're really interested in science or agricultural science, so I'll hook them up with a more science-oriented tour, or it's, um, I have a lot of homeschool groups and schools coming out now, and I have a couple of tour guides who have done curriculums on cranberries in schools. Uh, they've developed an entire curriculum, so yeah. they're wow. also great tour guides, too. So what are some particulars about the, the tour? How does it work? So, we, so um, April through November, we do coach group tours, like mm -hmm. I, I said. Um, and then come harvest, which is late September to early November, we add weekend public tours. <clears throat> That's where you, an indiv individual can come mm -hmm. and buy a ticket. So the tickets are at cranberries.org, and you look for the public tab, and you can come on a weekend. We, um, I have, we usually we start at my tour barn in Carver, and there we've kind of developed a mini museum. So a little educational tour barn, I call it. And we have, um, so we have like some historic equipment there. We have a historic cranberry separator, mm -hmm. which people love to watch. So we'll pour the cranberries in and let mm -hmm. them kind of feel like, it's actually a, what was back in the history, the, it was women's job who did that, who mm -hmm. separated the cranberries on the separator um, when it was all dry harvested. Mm -hmm. And we have farming equipment, like I was saying, the equipment's so it, interesting and different that yeah. we'll have some pieces donated that we've uh, show, we'll showcase, we do a bit of history. Um, just to briefly, the public tours are, are a little bit more about harvest and mm -hmm. just the different vines in the cranberry seasons and the, the cranberry bogs on that farm. And then if that farm that we're at isn't um, harvesting, we, we rent school buses and we take people to a wet harvest during harvest season. You will see a wet harvest. Either the picking of the berries when they knock them off, which is really cool to see, yeah. or the corralling and loading or both. So every tour is a little bit different. Is it rain or shine? Or? It is rain or shine. <laughs> <laughs> it is rain or shine. But be ready, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, only if it was like a hurricane or something like that. We do, you know, we workers, Cranberry farmers work in all kinds they of do. weather. Okay. So yeah. The only time a tour's ever been canceled mm -hmm. when was there was an incredible immediate threat of a of thunderstorms and it was like eminent, like get inside and, and um, a lot of the cranberry farmers pulled all their workers from the water because they're in water uh, for wet harvest. So um, I did ha <laughs> have to take the this group tour around to see things, but I, I didn't want them to get off the bus because um, I didn't want anyone to get electrocuted. You know. Oh, wow. Uh, so you brought a couple items we've kind of pointed to. Can you tell us uh, what um, we have? This is a, called a snap scoop. So mm -hmm. this is, is what they, one of the um, original ways they used an example of a snap scoop of what they used um, early on to harvest. Again, when it was dry, it was yeah. all dry harvested back then. Mm -hmm. It was more 96% dry harvest. Um, and then over the time, um, what changed the industry was the sweet dried cranberries became so popular that that's what you get with the wet harvest. You take those berries you, in wet harvest and you squeeze the juice out and you have that skin left, yeah. mix it with a little bit of sugar, and right. now you have sweet dried. Yeah. So those became so popular, it completely changed the industry around. Also, <clears throat> dry harvesting is two to three times more labor and time. Mm. So it's just not economical for the farmer to um, sustain themselves um, as farmers. So uh, many cranberry farmers that I know have other jobs as well. It's, it's, there's good years, there's bad years. Mm -hmm. um, over here, this is <clears throat> our bog in a cup. Ah. And this is what I do with the kids on the tours. Yep. So we <clears throat> have them fill a little bit of dirt, a little bit of sand, and they take a real cranberry vine and get to put it in there themselves. Oh, they love this. They love the hands-on. The parents love the hands-on. And um, they get to take this home and maybe try to grow cranberries wow. at home. <laughs> so, so some cranberries will actually grow on that, huh? Uh, I, if you take really good care of it, you know, I, I'd love okay. to hear some success all stories. Right, but right, they do really like it, and it's a great hands-on experience that we do with the education tours. Um, kids really like doing yeah, it. that's good. And it's just like a real practical touching of the vine and putting it into something to make it grow. It's mm -hmm. a it's real hands-on connection right. to a food crop. And cranberries are... Massachusetts number one agricultural food crop. Oh, that's, that's interesting. That's great. Um, and, and has it been a, a good demand, uh, you know, like throughout the year? Is it more on the holidays and the harvest time? Uh, holidays, definitely a lot of people, Thanksgiving, you know, pay yeah. attention to cranberries is, and you certainly want to bank on that <laughs> as mm -hmm. much as you can. Yeah. Um, we have tons of recipes on our website um, and people love the recipes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we go to fairs or things like that, we'll you know bring our we have recipe cards and people gobble those up. Um, 
no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Um, so we, so people love to cook with cranberries. So we have lots of recipes that we share, and um, I, you know, I think cranberries are great all year long. Yeah. And okay. you can get like I drink the raw juice, you know, a lot, um, and you can get that all year in the supermarket. Fresh berries you're really only going to get in the fall. So grab them while you can because that is getting smaller and smaller. The amount of fresh producers that th will have the fresh berries. Yeah. So I say okay. grab them when you can and then you can freeze them. The raw juice. Not raw juice. Yeah. Well, the raw juice yeah. is, well, raw, and so they don't mix it with sugar. So no, it's just no sugar straight. in it. Yes. I don't so know if I've tried that. Okay. It's, it's, yeah. it's you got to get used to it. Can you make a Cape Codder with that? <laughs> you can, actually. I, 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 you do get used to it if you get your taste buds used to it. It can be really tart, but when I go and do the tours, mm -hmm. um, the kids will often pick berries off the vine and they'll yeah. start chomping them, and I'm always like waiting for the, yeah. and they're like, it's <laughs> no not sugar. bad, you know, yeah, it's okay. not bad. And so you, you yeah. will get used to it, so, um, you know, we don't tell them to eat them, but yeah, yeah. I can't always stop them. <laughs> so for, for me, I always thought it's kind of like a special like fruit or something that I, you know, I have good memories of, say, my, my mother making uh, cranberry bread and mm -hmm. me, you know, when I was young, sl slicing them up so she could, you know, that was my job <laughs> to make the, for that. And also, obviously, uh, at Thanksgiving or yes. Christmas when we had a turkey, we always had uh, cranberry, cranberry sauce. sauce. And yeah. really, you know, I just, uh, I've, I've had the, uh, you know, from scratch, I guess, and made it, but I like <laughs> the can. Uh, something th about that for me, and and, and if you got to have it for the turkey sandwiches. Exactly. And I think that's kind of just quite a disappointment if you're still at turkey sandwiches, but you don't have and any. You don't have the cranberry. You don't sauce. have the cranberry sauce. It, does, you know. it really goes well with the uh, in cranberry sandwiches. Yeah. Stuff it. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it is. Uh, turkey. Yeah. So so I'm gonna have to uh, get on that. I think I have a can right now. Yeah. So I mean, it, most people think about them during the fall, and that's okay. You mm -hmm. know, nothing wrong yep. with that. Um, you want to jump on any chance you get, but we're really work to try to educate people on, it's not just cranberries, but it's about farming too. It's mm -hmm. important to support your local farmers and educating people that they're there and they're working hard and they're fighting, you know, every day to keep their farm alive. Um, we just like to be able to make sure we support them all year long. Yeah, and I, I think there are a lot of great recipes to try, you know, uh, that, that if you wanna add a little, a different little flavor, to them, I think I think it's great. Um, uh, oh, uh, so so, we, I guess we pretty much covered how we rate. Uh, New Jersey's another uh, area. Yep, New Jersey, uh, Washington, Oregon mm -hmm. are uh, cranberry growing um, regions. They're not as big as Massachusetts cranberries, but right. except for Wisconsin, of course. Um, but they are also in our family, cranberry family. Yeah. Okay. So if if someone wants to go and take the tour. Uh, yep. It's uh, cranberries. Cranberries.org. S dot yep. org. Can go out cranberries there. Cranberries.org. Should they get tickets ahead of time? Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we <laughs> often, almost, uh, last few years, we have been selling out. Um, we've only been doing the tours for a few years. Uh, COVID hit me, and then they had to shut down. I was before my time. <clears throat> um, but yes, we um, last few years, we will sell out. So um, I get in so many inquiries a day. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, it's, it's, Crazy. Okay. So yeah, buy your tickets so, yeah, ahead of time. Get ahead of time. Yeah. Get out there. Wonderful fall thing. It is to do. Yep. And the tours are about um, the tours are sixty oh. to ninety minutes. So yep. if people are trying to plan their day, you can still fit in a lot of other things. Um, we are working um, right now about to start big exciting news: a design and feasibility study for a permanent cranberry education and visitors center. Oh, nice. So that's something that. Um, Cranberry World used to be in Plymouth, and mm. that was very popular. I guess Ocean Spray used to run that mm -hmm. um, for many, many years. And then the Cranberry Festival, the AD Make piece, oh. used to do in Wareham. They're the largest grower in the world, and they're in Wareham. And they used to do a Cranberry Festival, two-day festival, for about 10 years, and it was very popular. Mm. So people ask us about those two things all the time. So we know the desire is there, so we're going to look into seeing if it, you know, viable to really grow this program and build a center. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, I was, I was wondering, that that's, that company's been around for a long time, right? Pretty ocean much. Spray is a co-op, so the grow, growers own co yeah. Ocean Spray. Right. Um, so they're, so they're called, considered a handler, they'll take your fruit yeah. and they process it into a product. Okay. And the, the tours start at, they always, at 10? 10? 10, 10 o'clock, yeah. We, we used to do two, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try a couple of buses at 10 o'clock this time, see, see what happens. Okay. Well, I want to thank you so much, Kim, for coming on the show and uh, and, and uh, speaking with us about the cranberry harvest and the cranberry tour. 
Henry Harvest tour. And um, uh, now, uh, are we looking forward to the uh, good season this this season? Then? I think so. Yeah. I think we're going to have a good a good crop and a good good season. Yeah, right. absolutely. Right. Thanks, Thank Kimmy. you for having me. You're welcome. All right. Well, thanks for uh, tuning into the Gig Show uh, for this uh, kind of uh, a different show. I hope we have some some more folks come on and tell us about things that people can go out and do. But uh, our next show, we're looking for uh, Gordon's Law is going to come on as a musical guest with Dan Cody back. So we hope you'll join us then. So thanks for watching the Gig Show. Of an old rodeo, just give me one thing, I can hold on. Just a heart